Hi there, I'm Cori Barger, and this is Bassoon Lessons Online, where I help you to learn the bassoon with more confidence and ease. Today we're going to be talking about the concept of the half hole. If you're new to the bassoon, you're probably a little bit confused by this, and maybe even if you're not new to the bassoon, it's still confusing. Occasionally it confuses me, I gotta say, <laughs> but it is a bit of a holdover from the olden days when most instruments had this concept. Other instruments now have a half hole key, like on the oboe, and others entirely will just get rid of the first finger, which is really like probably the more common fingering situation in instruments like the flute and the saxophone. But on the bassoon, we of course have a little bit more um, delicate considerations when we're using our half hole because it applies to so many different notes. It's not practical to use a key because the half hole needs to be a different size for basically every note that you encounter, which makes it a little bit of a misnomer and can make it really frustrating. What needs to happen when you are dealing with the half hole is that you take your first finger on the left hand and you just roll it or slide it gently down so that half or a quarter or three quarters or seven sixteenths of the tone hole that your first finger normally covers is actually open and this allows the note to go up the octave. So you'll be most familiar with this on notes like G. Here's the low G with the full fingering, one, two, three, one, two, three, and the whisper key. And when you roll your first finger down like this, we get the upper octave. The same happens on G sharp, also known as A flat. That half hole is always a little bit smaller and uh, the next the next note um, a whole step down the f sharp is also a half whole note and that half whole is always bigger so right near each other you have three different sizes of half whole and that can definitely get frustrating one thing to look for when you're perfecting where to put your finger is the sound feedback that you're getting from the bassoon so you'll get usually one of two things. You'll either get a growl noise or you'll get a squeak noise. So the growl noise is really common on um, G and F sharp like this. It's like the note's kind of breaking. It's not very clear. It doesn't really sound very good. Um, you may even get something as extreme as this, but that's not that common for um, those notes in particular. Other notes, you may have that happen. Um, so when you are trying to get G to come out and you get the growly noise, your half hole is too closed. If you listen very carefully at the beginning of the note, at the articulation, you can hear that it breaks a little bit. I would call this a crack. Um, other people will call it a split or a break or, or whatever terminology you use. It means the same thing. We're essentially getting multiphonics to come out and that's not a very musical sound. So we wanna really eliminate that as much as possible. So roll your finger more open and listen for a clear articulation each time you can tell right away when the half hole is too open if you get a squeak noise this is less common with g and f sharp but it's pretty common with g sharp also known as a flat so if you're playing along and you're trying to get the um a flat to pop out and you get a noise that's higher like that any sort of other overtone may be coming out. We have a couple of options. So be careful that that one's not too big. On my bassoon, particularly, A flat is very picky. It has to be just a little sliver, but if it's too closed, of course, it won't work. You have to find the happy medium that's really particular to your instrument. And sometimes this may be reed dependent too. Different reeds will give you different resonance possibilities and um, some reeds will make it much easier to play half holes than others. And sometimes you just end up with um, a little more leeway than you might be accustomed to. 
I know this sounds like an intimidating concept, but I promise that with practice, it gets much, much easier. So sit down and very slowly choose one note at a time. Don't try to tackle the half holes of all three of these. Just start with the simplest one, G, the one that you see the most in the repertoire right now. Um, start with G and just practice going back and forth, nice and slowly. And feel exactly how much your finger is moving. See if you can quantify how much it's either rotating or sliding. I usually make a rotation movement like this. And if it needs to be bigger, you'll hear the growl. If it's too big, you'll hear the squeak. You probably won't hear the squeak. Um, I would advise you very much against skipping this concept and just playing your G with two, three on the left hand. Don't do that. Um, sometimes it works, but it does not work consistently. And that tends to be a problem with the bassoon in general. Sometimes we can um, take little shortcuts that occasionally work, but they are not reliable in the long run and end up giving you a lot more problems. So stick to the written fingering and just spend time practicing getting yourself accustomed to making that movement. I promise that it becomes much, much more intuitive and eventually you'll just get a feel for it. It won't be difficult at all. Leave me a comment and let me know if this was helpful and also let me know if there are any other topics that you would like to have covered here on Bassoon Lessons Online. I would love to make as many lessons as possible to help you learn to play the bassoon with more confidence and ease. Hit subscribe and share with all of your friends and uh, thanks very much. I'll see you next time.